Hi, this is David Bonac Turtle. Welcome to video 5D, which is the fourth of five videos devoted to the 2012 Financial Risk Manager topic of Market Risk Measurement and Management. I published this on March 13th, and you can download it subsequently. So as we continue in sequence of the study guide, that means we have uh, several chapters from Kevin Dowd's textbook, Measuring Market Risk, Second Edition. I actually recommended a couple of these chapters to uh, Garb years ago, and uh, we still have Kevin Dowd in the curriculum. So I think it's an excellent textbook. He is a mathematician, and so he does sort of assume some math, if you have any time at all. Chapters 1 and 2, which are not assigned, are absolutely helpful as some of the basic foundation. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at get started, although briefly I do have some learning spreadsheets as usual associated with these readings. Um, 5D 1, 2, and 3, which are expected shortfall, Gaussian Coppola, and illustrations of the extreme value theory examples. And then again this year, I've decided not to tag any of them as highly relevant, just from an exam perspective. So as you probably know, that means that you won't be missing anything to, to not look at the spreadsheets. If you're interested in a more concrete understanding, I might save that for later if time is short. So chapter 3, Estimating Market Risk Measurements. Measures, we add, we start with estimate VAR using a historical simulation approach. And then um, an example that I think I've selected straight out of the Dowd. So the historical simulation to VAR in some ways is the simplest of all. Now we don't have the full data set here, but what we have here is an assumption of 200 daily profit and loss data points. So you can see some are profits and some are losses. This is on a certain day there was a daily profit of 1,946 and then the next day there was a loss of 2,524. The units don't particularly matter here. So in historical simulation as opposed to parametric we have a bunch of data. We do not have a distribution. And in this case it's uh, I like to call messy data because it's just an unsorted list of profits and losses. And then notice the um, portfolio of 200 profit and loss observations then gets sorted or ordered. So now um, now it's not when it happened, but here we have the highest profit was almost 6,000, all the way down to the greatest loss, negative 3,039 for the loss. And so once sorted, the simple historical simulation is very straightforward. In this case, when we have 200 observations, What's the 95% value at risk? Okay, so I'm going to acknowledge right away that we have some discrepancy in the authors between uh, Dowd that we're looking at and, for example, Jorian in the handbook. But I'm going to stick with the assignment Dowd. One, because it's assigned. Two, because I also think it's a little bit more elegant and consistent. So I'm using the doubt, it is assigned, and I'll acknowledge that um, jewelry in here would show 10th worst and 2nd worst. Okay, I can't do anything about that discrepancy. But if we say 200 observations and the 95% VAR, what that means then is we have 5% significance and 5% in the tail. So 5% of the 200 observations is 10. So that means we have 10 of the worst losses in the tail, can't show all of those, and we're going to draw the line at the 95% VAR as the 11th worst loss. So you can see here's the worst loss, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, we would count up there in this, I'm not showing those, we would get to the 11th, because at the 11th worst loss, then we have 10 observations that are worse than that, so 10 observations that would be in the tail. Okay, so it's maybe easier to see the 99% VAR here. At the 99% VAR corresponding to 1% significance, you'll recall VAR is always one-tailed. 1% 1 of 200 is two observations. So what we mean is after we sorted them, that means that this loss observation here and...